The duo of the twin princes from Dark Souls 3, Lorian and Lothric, are a terrifying experience in game. I don't remember half of Dark Souls 3, despite it being one of my favorites. It's one of these games that whenever I play it, it kind of just goes, well, oh, I survived and I carry on. Except for the giant skeleton. I'll never forget that giant skeleton. But I do recall these two princes. And I recall how terrifying this fight was and how vicious and violent and menacing it was. Let's listen to the music. I think one of my favorite parts about FromSoft music is, is the incredible complexity in here. There are like 18 different things happening at one time. You have the lower bass that's like boom, boom, boom. And that's keeping us moving forward. Then we've got the strings. Uh, here we just had a beautiful melody over top. You know, and then I think that, that there's so much we can extrapolate from the music, plus the harpsichord, which to me is indicating the, the age of Lorian, or perhaps even the location that we're in, that sort of cathedral that's dark and decrepit, and there's all sorts of just, it's just messed up. It's a messed up place. It doesn't feel right, which none of the game does. Again, um, melodic violence that I often hear occur in this music. And, and actually, like, normally we, we keep orchestration and we keep violins and strings. We keep those as melodic instruments. And something that's really interesting to me in FromSoft music is that often uh, strings are used actually to propel uh, the rhythm forward. They don't so much act as a melodic entity. Now, of course, we just heard that. And we also have the harpsichord doing its own thing. Everyone's kind of doing their own thing and they have their own sheet music and they're existing in their own little bubble. And yet somehow all of these pieces of the puzzle come together to create this stark painful and disturbing landscape of a musical structure and melody. It's extremely interesting and not comfortable, and that's obviously the intent. Uh, I want to keep going. I'm really interested in the in the melody here. There's a lot of anguish in this sound, and there's a lot of anger and pain and suffering. And I don't remember the lore between Lorian and and Lothric. They must be brothers, and so there is this duality. And I'm pretty sure that one of them is on the back of the other. What it is is a layering of of two different songs into one. These two have a symbiotic relationship with another. And so the reason why it sounds like this is because they are essentially dancing with each other. They are in enraptured with each other and, and ensnared into each other. I don't know if they're sharing consciousness, but they are certainly uh, sharing a physical space with each other. I, I don't know which one's on the back, if they're like connected by some sort of tissue or if they're separate. And so this this mixture of, in this feeling of pain and anguish mixed in with this wrapped up sense of, of souls 
is the reason why it sounds so chaotic and violent. This re relationship is very host-like and it's not pleasant for either one, maybe. The intensity there is just like uh, astounding. There's almost a release in that. When the chorus comes in, yes, it's epic, but it almost feels like there's a shedding of some of that tension that the two brothers have with each other. Like almost like they're absolved or they're released of that prison of having to look out for each other. The stakes like double and go way higher. And I'm trying to understand why that is. You know, from a musical perspective, what's interesting too is that you feel their inherent tension with each other pointed towards you as the player. But I'm curious because melodically it does things that I expect it to do based on my history with music. Like when it goes da 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 it resolves. And so it's, it's written in a, a traditionally Western polyphonic way. And polyphonic means, that's your music word of the day, polyphonic. Polyphonic is multiple voices with individual melody and harmonizing with each other, which is, that's standard Western music. You really hear that. But again, like, it, it's almost like if the first half is all of this tension and multiple things doing their own thing and the two twins having their own identity, they can join psychologically physically whatever in the second half of this song and become one 
with one purpose and one intention. So they're not they're not infighting. And I can't tell if that's because they release from the binds of each other or if they decide to put their differences aside and focus on one thing, which is conquering you, the player. So there's this interesting, it loses that sense of crunching and, uh, and dissonant distress. And I think that there is some characterization there as well. There's all these FromSoft songs, there's a point to them and I'm trying to figure out what that is. And in this case, yeah, I definitely think that they are apart in the first half, and then in the second half, they somehow f merge and focus in on the uh, target, which is you, and you're getting in the way of whatever they're trying to do. So yeah, I love this music. Love, 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 love. As always, if you like this sort of stuff, feel free to like, subscribe, and there's links in the about section. And yeah, definitely check out this video of Lady Maria and the Astral Clock Tower, which is not dissimilar to Twin Princes in terms of its structure, and it's pretty interesting to listen to with a big fat chorus drop. So check that out. As always, thanks to and I'll talk to you later.